Hi, Susan here. Okay, I'm going to attempt to do a rolled hem with three different types of fabric with my new Juki industrial sewing machine and this foot. Okay, that's what's next. All right, so I finally got it. I got the, the Juki in DDL 8700. And um, when I got rid of my other industrial machines um, after I, I stopped uh, manufacturing here in Florida, I made a huge mistake. I didn't keep any of my feet, or I'm going to explore to see if I do have anything left, but I don't think I have any of these rolled hem feet. And it is the biggest mistake I ever made. So what is available now, I'm trying to like relearn and see if I can show you guys how to do it. This is the new rolled hem foot. Um, it, it's nice, but I had a collection of rolled hem feet and um, it's kind of stressing me out. But um, this is a, a industrial straight stitch machine and I have different feet. I'm gonna give you a variety of videos in the next weeks on these different feet that I have and how to use them. Let me show you how I prepared for this and let's see if I can dig around and find any of my old feet uh, because industrial feet um, are generic to all industrial machines, so to speak. So I, even though it was a singer, I could have probably used it on the Juki. I wasn't sure, but all right, guys. I guess I'm gonna have to just make it, I'm just gonna have to make do with what I have. When people show you rolled hems out there um, and they're just doing it on a straight gain, grain, anybody can do that. Okay, so this is the true test. And I'm just cutting it out. This is a, um, a China silk and I'm cutting out of this, this stretch woven, which is gonna be the trickiest one to do. I'm doing a curve. And then I have a straight grain. cutting straight as much as I can and then I have the cross grain so um, let's see if we can tackle it with these three fabrics just threading the bobbin a little bit first thing I'm going to do is, is change the thread from white to black because I want you to be able to see what's going on so it got unthreaded and it's supposed to be threaded from left to right so I'm here I mean right to left. So it kind of does that little wrap around. Let's try that again. I'm putting it underneath. I've got the I've got the foot up with my my knees holding it up. And then I'm going to hold these little strips here, the threads. Try to do try to do a couple of stitches to get started. Now let's cut these little feather pieces out. And it's a it's a gentle balance of rolling this. It's probably not going to start rolling till around now. You kind of I pull it up, I hold the back till it starts to do that roll. You don't want it to be too much fabric underneath there, which is what's going on now. There we go, we just want it to roll like that. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, it's rolling guys, it's rolling. Full balance of rolling that, and it is nice. It's stitching it, it's rolling it. So all right, so I got the foot up, turned my wheel to release the tension and the threads, cutting it, and um, it really rolled nicely actually, um, but this is lengthwise. I would still probably have to play with tension a little bit. Like I said, this machine is brand new. Um, so lengthwise is the easiest way to do a roll hem, the, you know, the, the true test is crosswise and a curved um, seam or a curved hem. Let's try crosswise. I've got the foot up again. 
I'm feeding it underneath the foot like that. I'm holding my back threads and going down. I'm holding this fabric up like this. It's going to start rolling now, I hope. I'm kind of holding it taut. There we go. Nice. Okay, so it's, it's, you've got to hold it taut. Here, when you do that, it's rolling. It's rolling. Nice. Okay, here we go. And that is the roll hem crosswise. You can press that because it will stretch out a little bit. Okay, the true test is this curved seam. Curved hem. Let's see if I can do that. Again, I'm feeding it underneath. I've got the foot up. I'm using my, my knee for the pedal. Hold that the threads on the with your left hand. I'm not going to get that whole end. It'll have to be done. Okay, so now I'm going to just try to see if I can have it roll on me. Come on, start rolling. We've got it. We've got it. And when you do a, a curved hem, the trick is to pull up like this and to just kind of pull it sort of on a front, on a bias way. So now, now we're getting to the curved area, guys. And so far it's, it's doing it. It's not smooth as the knees. I'm lifting my foot. I'm trying to readjust a little bit. Let's see if I can get it to curve. smaller stitch. Okay. You kind of have to stretch it out a little bit to going up like this in order for it to curve. This would have to be pressed and it did a little glitch there. That's not good. Here we go. There we go. Back to see how it's rolling now. It's rolling beautifully. Kind of do a taunt, you gotta hold it tight, lifting the foot again, readjusting. Alright, so let's see what this turned out to be. Here's number one pressed. The straight grain one did the best and easiest. Um, still need practice with something like that. The cross grain um, did roll. It did completely roll. I still have to play with the stitch probably a little bit there if you can see that. Uh, the curved was the most challenging. It's not, not pretty guys. It's not pretty. So that still takes practice. Let's try that again. I'm going to try the next fabric just to be a glutton. Now I want it to curve, and it's it's curling nicely. I made a smaller stitch. Okay. And that's going nice, guys, nice. I'm kind of holding it up. With this hand, I'm holding it up. I'm holding this flat. I'm gently feeding it in there so it curves. Very nice. Okay. All right. So, making the size of the of the thread, um, the stitch is smaller because it it has to accommodate a lot more. It's fine. You have to be. You have to make sure that it doesn't. You know, billow out too much. It's pretty smooth actually for it to be um, in that in the rolled hem because rolled hem usually does kind of flare it out a little bit. So the lengthwise did good, guys. Not bad, not bad. So let me try the crosswise on this guy. I'm going to feed it here through that little little loop. Pull it back. Pull the threads back. Do a couple of stitches. 
Oh, gotta get on the fabric. Okay, let's try that. Here. Just a couple of stitches. I'm pulling this up high as you can see. I want it to start to turn on me. And I think it's starting to, is it turning? Yeah. This is stretch fabric. So that even makes it more difficult. So you just have to make sure you don't stretch too much. But it's actually doing really well. Nice. And there is that crosswise grain. Okay, maybe I'm just getting a little more confident with this. <laughs> but we're gonna. So the crosswise grain guys did did well as well. Look at that. The stitch is pretty pretty decent. I don't know if you can. So yeah, the crosswise grain is is nice. I do that curved hem. Curved hem with the stretch fabric. Oh boy. I'm going to hold these threads back. I'm feeding it through. I've got the foot up. I'm feeding it through. Got to get a couple of stitches going on there. Now I've got to hold the back as well as the front and let it curve. Let it let it curl under. Okay, it's starting to. It's doing it. It's doing it. I'm doing small little movements. Small little movements. Uh, with the smaller stitch, I think it's doing better. I'm not going to lift the foot again and make it, because if my, every time I lift it, it'll jag it. Make a jagged um, stitch. Not bad. Not bad. Again, this is, you know, has to do with practice. So when I lift the foot, it um, it makes like a little jagged thing. Is it's not a, it's not a good idea to lift the foot, right? But overall, it's uh, it's it turned it all under. There's no double. There's no raw edge showing. It is it's good. All right, let's get to the hardest one. So this is number two. Showing you the straight. Here's the curved, and then the inside of the curve. And here's the cross grain. So overall it did well. Let's get to the crepe de chine um, or china silk they would call it. This is the most difficult and let's see if I can do it. I'm trying to lift the foot again, have the threads back there. Sometimes you can fold it once like that. And then stitch on the fabric, a couple of stitches. Then lift the foot and then put it on the rolled hem area. That's another little trick. That's if you have some space to do the trick. I'm going to put it down. Let me get a few stitches going. I'm going to hold the back. Okay, come on. And hopefully roll the front at the same time. This is silk. And it is not quite rolling it. Let's keep going. Let's see if I can roll it. It is not rolling. It is not rolling. That is not a good thing. It's rolling in certain areas, but not completely. Let's, let's keep trying. Okay, there we go. I got it. Okay, now it's rolling. Very delicate fabric. My first collection was all chiffon in on the bias with curved scarves. We did nothing but rolled hems for months. <laughs> so anyway, so it started to roll here. It did not roll here. Let me see if I can get a little bit better. This might have to be adjusted. I think the needle might be too big at this point. I haven't even changed it. Okay, so cut some of these flyaways out. Let's 
That's that. I'm going to put it under. I'm going to hold my threads, lift the feet, the foot with my knee pedal, feed it underneath there like that, holding the back. Oops, let's see, I'm on, on my own fabric. Okay. Let's see if it's going to roll now. Okay, it's rolling. Over there it's rolling. It's not rolling. This is the cross grain and it is silk. And it's starting to roll there, but this is again going to need just a lot of practice. Let's move that out of the way. Okay, so This did roll on that side, if you can see it on that side as well. Um, it did not roll here in the beginning. It is flat there as you can see. So it's just a matter of practicing and feeling comfortable with this foot and the machine itself. So we've got the curve going on here. I'm going to feed it underneath. Again, pulling my threads behind me, putting the foot down. When you're doing a curve, you have to kind of pull it straight up like that. It's rolling right off the bat. That's why I had so many different feet, because different feet were good for different fabrics and different widths. It makes a different width on each foot. I Let's see what happens with this one. It is a disaster. So the different rolling, roll, rolling foot um, for sewing machines have different widths that it would be finished at. I believe this is a 3 16th and so the finished roll would be 3 16th. Um, this is the muslin. The curve was a disaster because I kept lifting it up. You can't do that. I have to have a smaller stitch. The crosswise grain did beautifully, and the lengthwise grain did beautifully. Um, this was the stretch woven. Uh, surprisingly, even though it is stretch, um, the lengthwise did nicely, the crosswise did nicely, and I'm pretty impressed with the with the curved hem because it did roll it all the way through except for when I had a little glitch here. So overall um, it, it worked well with this fabric. Then with the crepe de chine uh, the, or china silk they call it, the lengthwise did well. The stitch almost became too small because it got too slippery. The feed dog was probably too rough and the needle might be um, a little too large for this. You probably need a smaller needle. So there's some you know, adjustments that have to be done to the machine itself per fabric as well. And different feet work better for different fabrics. So I had an array of feet, some for chiffon, some for you know, satin, some for you know, whatever different fabrics I had. The curve seam um, could have been worse. I mean, it's pretty bad. Obviously, you can't use this. You know commercially but it, it takes practice so so I feel like I probably have to practice more or change you know play around a little bit more with this silk because I want to maybe change the needle size and uh, experiment further and see what little movements I have to do to make it sufficient for the pre uh, for the china silk so uh, but overall the the foot isn't bad <laughs> still getting used to the the machine and its feet and of course you know healing with my eyes so I can see properly so I hope this uh, helps you and then let me know in, in the comments if you try this and you tried to uh, you know, a roller foot on your machine and let me see if you were successful. Give this a thumbs up if this was helpful to you and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my videos because they're not consistent when they come out so you might miss one if you don't put that bell notification. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.